Shri Parama Saptana Adida Lavananda Ridayam. Another shout out to Lisa Karens. Hi, love you. So the self. Just reading a quote from Mark Twain where he says, you know, you've got to achieve mastery of your fear and you've got to practice resistance to your fear. And Mark Twain's a hero of some kind. And does he have the ultimate wisdom about fear? Because fear is a big question um, for anybody concerned with like the self and the ego and self-transcendence. And I think, well, yes, I did apply Mark Twain's philosophy. In my own case, I practiced resistance to fear, and I attempted mastery of fear. And achieved some success in those areas, but none of that put a dent in the ego in the self. And I found out that in spite of my best efforts to gain mastery of fear and overcome my fear and manage my fear and suppress my fear and compensate for my fear and dramatize my fear, overcome my fear, meditate past and beyond it, do heroic practices and exercises to confront it. I mean, I must have tried every strategy I heard of or could think of to proactively engage my fear in some way that I would overcome it. Because fear is like the big existential issue, very closely connected to, if not inseparable from, the great existential issue of suffering, unhappiness. So fear, suffering, and unhappiness, you just put all those together as one big concept and say, by age 37 or so, I was disillusioned with all of my progressive and remedial efforts to overcome fear. And by golly, in 2000, I was sitting in the meditation hall feeling worried, guilty, and afraid to such a degree I was basically unhappy, and unhappy with the results of all of my progressive and remedial efforts, so <coughs> that was the time when I had the conversion experience where I felt God crashing down, descending from above into me, my divesting magically and spontaneously of the chip on my shoulder that I'd had against God the Father and keeping Adi Da at bay for 18 years. And then after that having a devotional response to Adi Da and soon after that becoming a devotee and having some of my first experiences of forgetting my stress. And then recently, in the last six months or so, a further seeming realization has occurred of the state of non-collapse, which I talked about in another video. And I'm just watching, observing, continuing to observe, continuing to do inquiry, all of the practice waiting to notice, like, when is the big collapse going to happen? Um, and will I forget to do it, or start to get... start to lose my ability or interest in doing it? Will the ability to collapse start to fade? So there's just this roundness of... uncollapsed... presence feeling 
ability to turn to Adida and have experience, have the wound of love, but the profound collapse and bad feeling has barely, barely happened at all in six months. And that's a complete radical difference from the characteristic of my life. Which is, to go back to this description of what is the self, and is Mark Twain's philosophy sufficient? No, because I practiced his philosophy to the utmost possible degree that I could, and as I said, disillusioned with the results at age 37, and... Um, I wasn't having it. I was like, no, I refuse. I refuse <laughs> to be unhappy and to be afraid and worried and guilty in this level and degree. I, and then magically I found Adi Da, and there's been a progressive process of, I dare I say, self transcendence. Do I make a claim that my ha realization has any substance or merit so far? I just have to say what I'm observing, and that is, there was already a reduction in fear, reactivity, stress, in, in the first years after becoming a devotee in 2000, 2001, and that was remarkable, noticeable to me. And I would never want to go back to how I was. And I think that even this, whatever limited level of realization that I've experienced recently, that I'm hoping is irreversible. I never want to go back to the way I was even six months ago. I mean, It's so strange to be mortally, physically alive and not feel the necessity to collapse. Because there's a reason to collapse every second. Every second is mortality, every second is a reason to collapse, therefore. Well, in my old logic. Then I look at Adi Da, I look at Ramana Maharshi and Upasni Baba and Upasni Maharaj. And Santosha Tantra and Lisa Cairns, and I'm like, okay. The physical body is not what it seems. It is not merely a mortality machine that is here to keep us enslaved in a constant state of what seems to be reasonable fear. <laughs> the fear I used to experience was reasonable. So I thought, because there's a million threats per second in this universe, and there's a million weaknesses and reasons to feel guilty, reasons to feel worried, and reasons to feel afraid. I mean, if you did an honest inventory of every potential threat and every real problem, every imagined problem, and every warped foible of the mind that would lead you down any rabbit hole of self-concern, I mean, it's so seemingly easy to just follow the self-contraction and, and find justification to perpetuate it based on your perceptions of mortal existence, mortal shock, and all your inheritance of karmic reaction formation to patterns of experience. If this happens, I will feel bad this way, according to my personal formula of reactivity and So Mark Twain, 
your, your theory is not it's not sufficient for me and Adida your way and presence and person is sufficient for me and I really love Lisa Cairns and I love the long silent spots that she has in her stuff you know nobody else does that except Adi Da and Santosha Tantra I mean these people are just thank God thank God we need them now <laughs>